अशरफी हमें इस रेस्टोरेंट के बारे में बताइए कब शुरू हुआ ये और मैं साउथ गोवा में जितने भी लोगों से मिला हूँ सबने मुझे कहा है कि मस्ट विजिट प्लेस कोई अगर है तो वो नॉस्टेलिया है तो हमें इस रेस्टोरेंट के बारे में बताइए ये रेस्टोरेंट बहुत पहले से शुरू है शेफ़ फेरनांडो जो है ये चला रहे थे ये प्लेस बट ही इज़ नो मोर नाउ बट इट्स बींग टेकन ओवर बाई हीज वाइफ नाउ एंड बींग हैंडल वेरी नाइसली और इधर जो है बोलते हैं कि साउथ गोवा में जो पोर्तुगीज डिशेस है वो आपको कहीं अगर नहीं मिले तो इधर ज़रूर मिलेंगे उनका जो पोर्चुगीज एंसेस्ट्रल डिशेस है उनका जो कल्चर है उन लोगों ने इतना संभाल के रखा है पीपल इन द नेम इट सेल्फ नोस्टालजिया उसका मीनिंग जैसा है मिक्स्ड फीलिंग्स ऑफ सैडनेस एंड हैप्पीनेस बोलते इनका कहना ही ये है कि जो लोग अपने ग्रैंड मदर्स के डिशेस को मिस करते हैं दे कम टू दिस प्लेस रिसोर्स दे कामराव कामराव का मतलब प्रॉन्स तो एक तरह से डम्पलिंग्स हैं हैं प्रॉन डम्पलिंग्स और साथ में हमने मंगवाया है क्रैब उसके ऊपर में खूब सारा इन्होंने चीज़ डाला है साथ में थोड़ा सैलड है फ्रेंच फ्राइज है आइए शुरू किया जाए कितना क्रीमी टेक्सचर है इसका बाहर से बिल्कुल क्रिस्प है क्रिस्प है अंदर से सो मच स्टफ जूसी क्रीमी एंड नाइस प्रॉन फ्लेवर तो बिल्कुल ये एक तरह से प्रॉन्स का मिस बना लेते हैं है बहुत ही उम्दा जायका आइए अब ये ट्राई करें ऊपर में खूब सारा चीज़ है ये हमने एक जगह और भी ट्राई किया था रेस्टोरेंट तारो तोरो तोरो हम्म ये आ गया हमारा एले वेले क्या बोलते हैं आले बेले आले बेले आले बेले लुक सो नाइस हाँ मैंने ये चीज़ ट्राई नहीं की थी बाकी तो जो मेन्यू में डेजर्ट्स हैं वो सारा ट्राई कर चुका हूँ तो इसके अंदर में इन्होंने आइसक्रीम डाला है कोकोनट है जैकरी है और ये हनी है और ये जो ऊपर ये बनाया है क्रेप ये मैदे से बनाया है आइए बहुत ही डेलिकेट है तो हम्म गुड हम्म अमेजिंग इवन आई एम ट्राइंग इट फॉर द फर्स्ट टाइम अच्छा बहुत ही बढ़िया आइसक्रीम कोकोनट जैकरी हनी मतलब फुल ऑन मीठा है और जो जैगरी यूज किया है ना दिस इज नॉट द नॉर्मल जैगरी हां शुगर की जैगरी नहीं है वो नहीं है शुगर जैगरी नहीं है दिस इज द जो गोवा का ये रहता है ना क्या बोलते हैं उसको कोकोनट जैगरी कोकोनट जैगरी मतलब गोवा का टिपिकल गोवा का जो गाउटी गाउटी यस थोड़ा थोड़ा सीख गया मैं बहुत ज़्यादा सीख गया <laughs> आपको देख के लग ही रहा होगा आते ही पहले लाइम वाटर पी रहा हूँ तो थोड़ा सा गोन टाइप बन गया हूँ मैं भी है डियर कस्टमर इफ यू आर हैप्पी विद आवर फूड एंड सर्विस काइंडली रिंग द बेल वेरी हैप्पी So basically, this is my great grandmother's 150-year-old home, which my mother inherited, and uh, it was lying as it was. And in Goa, you cannot keep a home that is not used because with the rains and everything, you know, it was just falling down. And instead of building on it and breaking it down, I decided to start a, a restaurant. And cooking is not something I have learned professionally; it's something I've learned from my mother. So what we do here is only recipes that I have learned at home and recipes that we uh, we eat every day, and I do the cooking myself basically. So what kind of food you do? Okay. So my mother's Goan, my father's Hyderabadi. 
So I do both those cuisines. I do Hyderabadi and Goan. And during the course of running the restaurant, I traveled a bit on the coastline. So we've, I learned a couple of recipes from people, you know, in their homes. My USP is that I do recipes that are made in homes, basically. So a couple of coastal recipes we've added, but otherwise it's just recipes from my mother's, uh, you know, whatever I've learned from her. The walls have photographs which belong to my family, basically. So it has like eight generations of this, this family that, that exists. My parents, my grandparents, great-grandparents, their parents. So you are originally from this place, Salegaon? Yes. Tell me about this neighborhood. No. Very quiet, extremely basically. Uh, Salegaon was the village, you know, that had very learned, very educated people. Most of Goa does, but Salegaon were more teachers, doctors. So a lot of people from Salinga actually went off to Africa from here and from Africa, you know, I guess when things changed for them and everything, a lot of that community moved to Hyderabad. So Sikandrabad in Hyderabad has, you know, a huge Goan community, which is from Salinga. Oh, and basically, yeah, that's it's, it's very interesting because if you when you come back, when I opened this restaurant, in fact, I had so many people who, you know, have homes here and who have grown up here, who've crossed this house, who've seen it when they were small. And then they kind of identified it with our home in Sikandrabad. And most of our homes in Sikandrabad, if you see, if, if one travels there, have a very Goan, the Goan homes there have a very Goan, they have the balkan, they've kept to the flooring, they've kept to the tiled roof. Now things have changed over the years, but yes, it, it was like that. Nolan is the most sought after person in Goa. Absolutely. For the local food and um, to understand about the local cuisine. Please don't say that to my mother. She laugh at you. She laugh at me also. So, <laughs> this is really nice. Thank uh, you. So, this cuisine, what we are having, will classify it under Goan cuisine this or, is, or is your food? This would be coastal. This coastal. has, this is not, the, the ingredients are Goan, but the preparation is all coastal. Different. This is Kerala. Mm -hmm. This is Malaba. A bit of Malaba and Chetinad mixed. And the, the Rasam is Chetinad. All, all, all out Chetinad. Yeah, Did you try the rasa? I'm true to your Mexican heritage <laughs> with my taco. <laughs> with my taco. <laughs> so we're dining with the honorary consul general of Mexico for Goa. You can you can correct me if I'm wrong on that. Also, very distinct. It's like a it's like a paach panchi wala fan for food. Mm -hmm. You have the the Hindu Goans, correct, that is the Gaur Saraswat Brahmin community. Unko chodlo. You have uh, Catholic Goans, correct. Those are basically people who, not to be mistaken with the Portuguese Goans. The Portuguese Goans are the ones who, because we were a territory of Portugal, mm -hmm. were taken over. But the converts that happened who willingly wanted to convert to Christianity back in the day, we also as a religion, had a lot of conversions and prosecution. It's a very dark history of like many other religions around the world as well, I'm sure. So we had that whole conversion thing happening where you had the Portuguese coming and talking to the local going car saying that you have to convert, convert or face prosecution. So the people who converted turned out to be a Catholic sect of Goals. Yeah. Catholicism wasn't the true identity of the state of Goa the land of cows as they called it, yeah. right? Catholicism wasn't there. The missionaries came and did all of this. Yeah. So now we're done with three. So you have the Hindu Goan, you have the, the Catholic Goan and the Portuguese Goan. Correct. Then you have the, the so-called minority, which nowadays does not is not called a minority, which was the Muslim Goans. They have a certain different preparation yeah. well in totally. terms of their cuisine. Yeah. Absolutely. You know, so it, it the fan is really, really eclectic and dynamic in terms of kya kidar se kya milega. Now, if you go and say, I want, um, um, say, a shakuti. I was just going to say, yeah. we have four varieties of shakuti in Goa itself. And shakuti is actually a, it's, it's, it's a dish made in every Hindu Goan home. 
but there are four regions so you have starting from the south right up to perne so each region has and it's all within goa mm -hmm. each region has a different preparation of shakuti so the one simple and basically shakuti is either made out of mutton mm -hmm. or now chicken correct me if i'm wrong mm -hmm. normally it's Today, a mutton uh, yeah, and mushroom shakuti mushroom shakuti so you know it yeah now they are coming in shakuti, which is your clam shakuti mm -hmm. uh, yeah you know. so you know it's it's really so amazing you know there is a place when we um, go out you know in the evening uh, or if it's a late night in mapsa there is a, a at the bus stand okay yeah. where they serve you uh, you know sungta bhaji or uh, a clam shakuti alankar is it yes yeah. yes next to the alankar yes so there these these uh, families they just bring in in you know t in in uh, uh, kind of uh, containers what their mothers make at home so people coming back late from a party and whatever they you know stop there and have a pao with one of these every time if you go there are five places there all five the same sumta bhaji will taste different in all five places so it's it's just yeah, I, i always wonder no i don't know if you can help me with that Shakuti is supposedly a very Indian dish. How does it come about? I mean, is it Indian? Lot of lot of stories are there that around. It is around Shah Koti. It comes from mostly the Adil Shahs and all the people in Goa. Now, this is interesting because you don't get it much in the rest of India. I wish his mother was here. She's done a whole yeah, PhD on Shakuti. But Mela, if you could enlighten us a little bit. No, so first and foremost, whatever Shakuti you land up eating in Goa is true, irrespective of color. Yes, I agree with that. Mm -hmm. I'll tell you why. There's a big debate that people say wrong color, my color, right color. Yeah. कुछ नहीं. Yeah. The color only em emits from something called the chili. Yeah. Right. Now there are about 17 different chilies documented in Goa with the limited research I know. उसके अलावा कितना I do not know. 17 is a big number for a, such a small state. If you honestly ask me. and for someone who loves spice you know hum dono to as out of that equation <laughs> but, but for people who love spice it one chili becomes more potent than the other one like if you have a chili there's something called uh, what is the button chili from perne perne yeah you know this is literally this big yellow color ka so if you have the shakuti over there first and foremost if it's in perne It will be called a shagoti, not a shakuti. Yeah. Okay, mm -hmm. because it's the same format, mm -hmm. but the way they marinate their spices and the way they do stuff is very different than what we are used to and accustomed to doing it over here. Yeah. In in Catholic Goan houses. Yeah. So the taste will be slightly more herb based taste mm -hmm. on their end, or dusri baat more pungent because the chili used. Yes. phenomenally just that like that also you have something called the kafriyal which i'm mm -hmm. sure you must have heard yeah. of the, the you know the the chicken kafriyal mm -hmm. the chicken kafriyal has a very fast fascinating story as well yeah it's come from the kafir tribe who were basically slaves bought by the portuguese administration here who are from the subcontinent of africa yeah Because so it's an African dish. Yeah, it's, it's actually an African dish. People yeah. think that kafriyal is Portuguese, but you won't find it in Portuguese. Yeah. And go, it is not Goan because it was always brought by. Correct. You know, it's come from the the slaves. Or so yeah. the reason was that you must have seen many of these fields around the place and mm -hmm. stuff like that. Correct. So they needed manual labor for that. So many of the Africans who who came over here, they had a very very dry rub of the original uh, kafriyal as to what it used to be. the rub was very very simply it was as potent and as close to a barbecue rub rather than what you see it as a gravy today a semi dry gravy to unka kya tha pura murgi leke he they would take the full chicken rub it in the day like before heading out to the fields from 7 o'clock in the morning till 12 they would let it marinate in their little box or dabba mm -hmm. and they would rub it with the, the most spices of green chilies that's how you got the color mm -hmm. then they would make a little bit of a hay uh, thing in the field with whatever that busa and all light it up on a stick they would roast it and eat it and once they ate it they would perspire 
बिकॉज बैक इन द डे दे वॉज नो ए सी हाँ यूरिंग इट ओली इमेजिन दे वुड पसपाय सो मच कि बाद में दे वुड जस्ट गेट अ गुड नाइट गुड आफ्टरनून स्लीप फॉर दैट वॉट वॉज कॉल्ड अ सी एस था विच वी स्टिल बिलीव इन a lot of us True. i know i do yeah. but yeah it yeah. work better right it work much better and more productive if you honestly ask me yeah. i but with this kind community. of heat how can you go out anyway yeah. correct you know it's it's we were just talking in the kitchen he's like you know to cook under these circumstances but it's just so hot so yeah there's a question like how do you guys survive this heat <laughs> like throughout the is december and is the temperature is 30 degrees so the, the, the killer is not the heat it's uh-huh. the humidity humidity yeah. yeah 90% plus As I was saying, we are actually having good weather. October is even worse. These are very specific of Hyderabad. Mm-hmm. These are rice papads, and these are dahi ke mirchi, which is these we make here ourselves. It's just green chilies which you uh, marinate in some curd and masalas, and then sun dry it in the yes, sun dry. So here we have chakuli. Yes. Then halim, dhup chau kima. and nimbu zafrani pulao nimbu zafrani pulao so this again is a very um, i think most dishes you know i i think when they made it home it's always a mix it's it's like a, a, a mother saying you know ki let me get my greens in let me get my protein in mm. so this probably was one of those the the khima where khima is made and i've got my egg in also at the at the same time my mutton comes in from delhi I still get my mutton in from Delhi because ninety-nine percent of my cooking is uh, my kachi biryani. I cannot take a chance with you know the mutton. So the halim we make sure. I mean the halim, no grinder, no mixer. We cook it. Try the very thick. Try the yeah. mirchi also with the rice and the rice is a lovely mm-hmm. after taste too. Sure. It's not very spicy also. Mm-hmm. <coughs> What was your favorite? So, I have not tasted good halim for a long time. So halim, I really like. Mm-hmm. And I like the the first dish that we tried. Even my favorite was this one. Mm-hmm. Out of all of them. So, which is your what? What is food closest to your heart? we are trying to he is asking all of us what is our favorite on the table mm-hmm. i said i have to ask you what is a cuisine closest dish, to my heart that is closest to your heart very very wrong for a restaurant here to say but dal right. chawal dal chawal it's like my go to comfort meal and like literally so in hyderabad we do a khatti dal okay. which is soured with tamarind very simple we mix a tuar and a masoor and then you know it's cooked very important it's cooked in a mud bowl it's not cooked in a pressure cooker it's not cooked you know on the this it's cooked in a terracotta bowl till it reaches that dal soft consistency served with tamarind and a tadka a ghee tadka heaven basically this menu that we've done for you today right effectively is uh how do i put this i said this to somebody else for a menu we are doing a very elaborate menu for them uh and i i laughed and i said it's like our greatest hits album <laughs> like you know for like of the our favorite dishes dishes that we would recommend blindly the arancini is like your traditional italian arancini mm. so it's the inside as well as the fried curry leaves the roasted garlic meal that's what gives it the whole local feel and element it's a bit salty it's supposed to be it yeah. because uh, so the the point of having these very local dishes is mm-hmm. that when you make your pulao you cook it with like a rich stock mm-hmm. so that the saltiness comes through from the stock mm. so the idea is to have that 
to have the acidity mm -hmm. and what happens is that when you bite into it and you eat it, you are creating those memories mm -hmm. of you know sitting down under that chamiana and eating something which is like so locally uh, flavorsome. Mm -hmm. Again, and the, and the beauty of it is that it's always made by these village aunties who will always have that extra measure and pinch of salt. Uh -huh. And then you can't complain about it because if you do, like, you know, you're in, you're in for trouble. It's like crisp from outside, soft, gooey. Yeah, and I, and I love the, the, the contrast between the crisp and the gooey. Yeah. And because you don't, like, you don't normally associate one with the other. Mm. Here you go. Like, you know, normally when you think of salad, it's not like the first thing you want to eat, but at least this way you have the scope to eat a salad. Mm -hmm. And still feel good about the fact that you're eating it because there's a, there's a generous pork element there. Mm -hmm. So now to give you an understanding about the pork, we uh, source it from a local butcher who gives us the meat as fresh as possible. There's no freezing of the meat involved or transit time. Mm -hmm. We take it straight to a kitchen which is not even 500 meters away. It's cleaned. Uh, and cooked there and then on the spot. We have a, an open wood fire kitchen. Mm -hmm. So all the meats, uh, even some of the fish dishes that we do are cooked there. So it has a nice smokiness. Uh, you've got spice elements coming through. Mm -hmm. When I say spice, they're not masalas, but regular spices. Uh, and I, I don't know, I think it's just the smokiness that comes in beautifully through mm -hmm. this pork dish in particular. Shaved cucumber in there, there's mm -hmm. a citrus dressing. You've mm -hmm. got green beans under that as well. Mm -hmm. So we have to mix it thoroughly? Just mix it thoroughly however you like. You can make a complete mess of it now. Okay. Uh, that's so that the dressing spreads nicely over everything. And make sure you take a little bit of everything when you're taking like a forkful. There's so much going on just with one bowl. It's kind of like that. This is uh, really amazing. This sweet, sour, a bit of spicy. So all the flavors, all different textures and very juicy. I feel like stirping it. Yeah. Oh. The best part was the spices was not overpowering the yeah. whole dish. Yeah, it was very, balance. very well balanced. Yeah. All the flavors. I don't like much fat in Thai meat. Yeah, me too. Mm. It was perfect. And the thing is, people use that very often as a cheat. So they, like when you're prepping food, right? Mm. You say, okay, I'm eating a pork worth X weight. Mm -hmm. The fat adds to that weight, so you're like, you know, saving on your meat component. And it's not fair to the diner mm -hmm. at the end of the day. So. In fact, this was my favorite pork dish in Goa. So what we did is, we took uh, popcorn, we've popped it here freshly at home. We've given you rendered Goan sausage. Mm -hmm. uh, and yes, you had pork as your last course and there's a sausage course here, but I always count sausage, like a Goan sausage, as a completely different element, mm -hmm. not even related to pork. Like I'll do two courses back to back uh, with each of those, primarily because at the end of the day, they are completely different flavor profiles. The meats don't taste the same, the textures are not the same, nothing is the same. Mm -hmm. And it's one of the most intense but most beautiful flavors I've eaten anywhere on the planet. Mm -hmm. I absolutely love it. Mm. I really like the crispiness of the rendered chorizo. It blended very well with Parmesan cheese and um, the fat. It added an intense flavor to the popcorn. Loved it. So a lot of this came from Macau with the Portuguese. Mm -hmm. uh, and what we've done is kind of represent a very local dish which mm -hmm. is called a kaldi. Which I'm sure you might have eaten on your 14 days here. Not yet. Uh, <laughs> But in our own style, again, so we've got local produce in the form of the, of the shrimp, mm -hmm. uh, even the free range eggs. And then at the end of it, we've got this beautiful gravy which we absolutely love, which is called the kalji. Mm -hmm. If you go over that, you kind of represent Asian roots as well. Uh, this is my wife, is a senior chef. Hello. Hello. Hi. Thank you for having us. Thank you for having us. <laughs> Mild, creamy, garlicky, and the sauce is quite rich. 
Mm. What was the base? Oh. So it's a digestive crumb. Mm. So we, we bake it a little more, give it a little bit of bite mm -hmm. with a, a fair amount of butter as well. Yeah, the caramel texture. Now for me, it was quite an enriching experience. And um, the way you have explained, the, the way you have narrated the story of each of them was quite interesting. So, thank you so much for having us. And I hope like anyone who is coming to Goa, they should come to this place. At least towards, I think in my opinion, it should be that the last uh, part yeah, of the I, trip. I think it's a, it's, it's a nice way to end. Like I was yes. telling you, a lot of yeah. our visitors are usually the guys ending their trip. Yeah, yeah. Thank you.